Lesson 5-7, Rational Exponents. So this lesson builds on our lesson from yesterday. Um, it moved quickly, so be prepared to hit the pause button as necessary. Uh, what's another way to write root 2? Well, we've talked about it. You could write that as a rational exponent. Remember, ratio, fraction. And it's the same thing, and you can check it on your calculator if you want. I'm not going to do it. Just work on putting 2 to the 1 half power and see if you get the same thing as square root of 2, which you will. So, we can do that with problems like this, 4 to the 1 third. However, we should start getting used to this. Whenever we see 4, 8, 16... 25, 9, 27, so on and so on. We should look at those as, as cubes, vortex, squares, things like that. So this is actually 2 squared to the 1 third. And that's 2 to the 2 thirds. It's a good habit to get into. Same thing here. 8 squared to the 1 third. And we could actually square 8 and see where that takes us. But another fun way to do it, 2 to the 3rd, to the 2nd, to the 1 3rd. And hopefully you remember you can multiply these. So the 3 and the 1 3rd cancel, we end up with 2 squared, which we could stop at. Or we could write 4. And when I say we could stop at that, I simply mean <clears throat> that sometimes when we're working on radical problems. We're just trying to reduce the exponent and not actually simplify. Because here I just said, what's another way to write it? If we simplify it, then we have to actually go this far. So this is the other way. Just write it as a third root of x. In this case, we have actually two choices. We can say it's a third root of 7 squared, or we can say it's the square of a third root of 7. So you have two choices in that case. In this case, you don't have two choices. You have to say the third root of 3 squared because the fifth root's inside the parentheses, and you have to do that part first. Remember, I warned you, tricky stuff. So now, evaluate or simplify, please. Let's get rid of the negative for now. What's the fourth root of 16? It's 2. And let's bring the negative back. The negative first. Hopefully you remember if you have a negative, you just slap it on the bottom. Get rid of the negative. So 16 and negative 1 fourth is 1 half. Now for me, you have to show all this work. But you can easily check it by putting it in a calculator. Same thing here. You can just put that in the calculator. It's going to pop out an answer. But for our sakes, we're going to say... That's 243 to the 1 fifth, which is 3 to the 3rd, which is 27. And one more time over here, I'm going to go 64 to the 1 third, which is 4, which is 1 over 4 to the 4th, which is 1 over 256. I'm making it look fairly easy. I've been practicing a lot lately, but also once you've done these over and over, it starts to become much faster. So you can also simplify expressions. Simplify the following. Well, we have the same base, so we can add the exponents. It gets us x to the one third plus three fifths, which is x to the fourteen fifteenths. This one bugs people a lot, so bear with me. 1 over y to the 3 fourths, and people say, great, son, got rid of the negative. You're always yelling at me about the negatives, so I got rid of it. Yeah, but now we've got, you know, this is the same thing as 1 over the 4th root of y to the 3rd. So we have to get rid of that. We can't have a radical on the bottom. So what can we multiply to get rid of the radical on the bottom? And this is actually nice, because it's a lot easier than rationalizing in radicals. 3 fourths plus 1 fourth is 1, so we just got that. And we've 
rationalized it. We've gotten the radical off the bottom. Here's a problem that looked like you can't do it. 3 to the 1, 6. Well, I don't have common bases. Well, I need common bases. 3 to the 4th. I've rewritten 81. 2 to the 8th. Also known as 3 to the, my bad, 1, I don't know, to the 1 eighth. 3 to the 1 half over 3 to the 1 6. 3 to the 1 half minus 1 6, which is 3 to the 1 third. And this one you could do on a calculator, but it wouldn't help you very much. Let you know that three to the one third has a decimal exists as a certain thing. Fourth root of nine z squared. Remember this is three squared. So now we can distribute that. And I keep forgetting my fractions, that's bad. 3 to the 1 half, z to the 1 half, which a lot of people will rewrite as 3z. Um, and the rational exponents, I'm just going to leave it, generally speaking. Same thing on here, you'd actually have to write 4th root of y over y. I don't care, write it either way, it doesn't matter to me. I like to leave it here, just think it's easier to deal with. And we're back to rationalizing by multiplying by the conjugate m to the 1 half minus 1, m to the 1 half minus 1. The bottom, get m minus 1 and leave it. Top, we get m minus 2m to the 1 half plus 1. Rationalized. There's a radical on top, there isn't on the bottom. And again, if you're really into it, you could rewrite it as square root of m. Personally, I'm happy to leave it as m to the 1 half. I really prefer working with a rational exponent. I just think it's a lot easier. That was a lot of material. It's only one page of notes. It seems like it went very quickly. You need to practice. You need to find answers to the problems and, and start banging your head against them. If you try to just do a couple and think you'll get it, you won't. It's very challenging. It's a very different perspective. And it was not covered in Algebra 1. So a lot of people struggle. Good luck.